Okay, so all I've done so far is I've dropped in my oval and drop shadow on this side because the uh, even though the light is coming through the shadow goes still drops where it has to because the light source is over here um, remembering that oh, um, amethyst oh jeez oh, um, amber is transparent as well or at least translucent if it's a transparent piece similar to this one you're going to have light coming through it and it's going to have a lighter section on this side similar to our amethyst now the thing is not all amethyst or not all amber is transparent some of it's translucent and some of it's opaque so you have to be aware of what you're drawing if it's opaque you'll get more of this if it's translucent or transparent you'll get more of this if it's translucent, it's almost opaly in, in style. But this is a transparent one that I'm going to show you how to do. So I've got my thing. I'm going to draw a little, start laying out my color in, and shape in my sienna. And essentially, I'm going to give it a little bit of form first. It's what I like to do with my stones so I don't forget. As you know, guys, I'm getting older at this stuff. I'm forgetful. Give it a little bit of shape. Now, because it's transparent, this side here is going to come forward more. Now, this is just with my light, light, very light sienna. I'm not putting a lot of tone on this because I can add tone. I can't take it away, right? Especially when we're drawing in pencil crayon. If it was watercolor, I could pull up the paint a bit, but it's not, so. Now I'm gonna actually give it just a little bit more tone along this edge here. Just where the light is hitting. Now I'm going to start giving it a bit more shape with my goldenrod. And, and amber is a golden color, so coincidentally I'm using similar to our gold tones, right? I'm going over the whole thing in goldenrod. I find the goldenrod a fairly warm color and it gives me a nice little brown tone that I've got going on, which is good. And I, I know that sometimes it, it really looks like that I'm not applying any color whatsoever, but I am, I assure you. It's very subtle. Uh, we always build our colors up, especially when we're blending these tones together. Now this is my canary. And I'm going to go in. I'm not filling the tooth like I would in, if I was drawing gold. I'm just trying to lighten up the whole surface just a little bit. Give it a little bit more warmth, a little more honey color. Now, amber, similar to this piece. Now, this is all flecked, uh, but amber tends to have stuff in it. People like pieces of amber with little bugs and whatnot in it. So I'm going to take a dark brown and I'm going to start adding some flex and some, you know, some little lines. They tend to be, you know, directional in amber. If I want a little bug, I'm going to here's my little bug. I don't know not really feeling it and I'm gonna go dark back to my dark brown I'm gonna reassert some shape up here I'm gonna warm it all up actually where'd my white go I'm going to this is going to be my white zone here where the light is going through. 
So I'm going to start lightening this up now. Basically smudging this all together nicely with my white. Lightening this side of the stone, pulling it all together. And because it needs to be unified, I actually need to put a little bit of white over the whole thing. If I don't, what ends up looking, it looks like it's two different stones in the same sort of place. I'm pushing down a little bit harder on this side so that this side of the stone whitens up more. And then I'm gonna actually warm this back up with a bit more goldenrod down here. Get my honey back. Going over this, now this tooth is full here so it's not gonna take as much color. I'm going to add a little bit of sienna to these guys, just so that I have some variations in the, the tone of my flex. Oops. A little more yellow on top of my goldenrod. Oh, do I want it a little browner? Maybe just up in this zone here so that when I add, be careful that you don't overwork your, your stone. It is always a concern when you're drawing as you overwork a drawing. Uh, but you'll get that as as time goes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my core highlight right into this dark zone, and that contrast is what's going to give us the illusion of translucent or transparency. Now, it's not round; it's oval, so it's going to come down just a bit further here. Just like that. Okay. Again, if you feel the need to add a tiny little bit of black in there to drop shadow this, you know, you can give it a little bit more form. But if we were doing this in a, in a, in a, if we weren't just drawing this on a piece of paper, we would have a bezel around this or we would have something securing it into a pendant or whatever we're doing. Okay, that's basically how I draw amber.